Welcome to everybody. I'm Dario, and I'm very happy to be here with you. Uh, we, are, we are here to speak about uh, the changement uh, of a web company to a single person or a couple of person to a bigger structure, a bigger company to um, give more opportunities to people to communicate with, with other companies, okay? We are Webull, and we are located in Italy, in the uh, northeast of Italy. And uh, it's me, Dario, founder. Daniele, also the founder. Very important, Hugo. <laughs> He's the boss, the real boss of the, compa of the company. Yes, please. Erika, the designer. Davide, developer. And Paolo, the sales manager. And we also have two other people just come in the, in the company, a copywriter and another developer to mm, develop specific uh, ideas and programs. And also, we are co-founder of Zoolanders, that perhaps some one of you use. Uh, we, we sell component, specific components um, for Zoo, okay? And we did it with uh, Milian, that have a Spanish company. And uh, this is a very important project that we did, and we are very proud of it. So, <coughs> As a company, we are really uh, involved with technology and innovation. And this is, I think, the same thing of you. Uh, all of you uh, uh, love innovation. And for this reason, I think you love Joomla too. I see many people here and uh, many people that I know, but also people that I don't know yet. And so I will, just for a second, I would like to ask you your name and if you have a company or you are a, a single person programming. I'm a Wim, and uh, I have a small company just starting in, uh -huh. in uh, Unix Island. With m many people? No, just me. You, you, yourself. Thank you. My name is Emily. Mm -hmm. I have a company in uh, Norway. We own two in Norway, but they have a big development team in Ukraine. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm Jens. I'm not in the same company as Emily. Ah, I see. Thank you. I'm uh, Joe Sunny. Uh, my business is uh, Joe Joomla in Canada and uh, two people. I see. I listened to you mm, speak to your talk at uh, uh, Joomla World Fo Conference. It right. was very inspiring, uh, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Robert. Um, I work for my own and have had my own company for the past. Okay. Thank you. I'm uh, Brian, I work for Red Component, and I'm still thinking of to start an uh, outsourcing company back in my country. Thank you very much. I'm Oleg from Ukraine, uh, and we are 26. 26, okay. <laughs> so you are here also to learn from you. If, in fact, I did this, con this uh, solution because I don't like to people to stay like in a class, but I want to share with you, and uh, everybody is... Uh, really welcome to uh, interrupt and uh, say something when you want to say. Hello. Thank you very much. I'm Luke, a small company. I'm developing websites in my free time. OK, thank you. Uh, my name's Chris. I've uh, got a company with eight people on Madeira Island. Thank you. Uh, my name is Enes. Uh, I'm, com I'm come from Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a web design company, uh, and also uh, next month I have a plan to launch a template blog. 
Template Club. Hmm, very interesting. Thank you. My name is Ruth. I'm from the UK. I run a company called Virio Technologies, and we also have Virio software and microdata to begin with. And there were eight of us, but with no downsizing. So, so your story is quite similar to mine, I think. Yeah. Well yeah. I went from one to eight in yeah. a year. Yeah. And now it's, uh, yeah, it's too fast. <laughs> Very interesting. It's uh, emotioning, too. Mm. Thank you. Uh, my name is Oscar. I'm from I'm from Canada, but I, I don't have a company. But my boss, he doesn't speak English, so he sent me to to provide him a surname. I <laughs> see. <laughs> <laughs> what he speaks? French? French. French. Okay. Thank you. So I'm Sarah. I run a company called Pixpro. We are a web engineering team for project engineers. Okay. How many people? Me. Thank you. I'm Dick. Um, we have a company <coughs> on Paul. And we are six people. Thank you. Tom, I work with Sarah and with Pixpro. Oh, good. Thank you. My name is Meg. I'm from India. I help the non-profit organizations to build and maintain websites. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Adam. I work for an agency in London. The coolest agency. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, coolest agency in London. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm Andy. I have a company just, just myself. Okay. Okay. UK. Thank you. Uh, I am Sabina and I work for a company as developer. Okay. So it's my private interesting why I'm I here. see. Thank you. I am Michael and I work at a small agency in Brighton, UK. Okay. Thank you. Eight people? Yeah. Okay. I'm Sasha from Lucene and we are six people. Okay. We know very yeah. very well. <laughs> we are very good friends. So yeah. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Thank you. I also work. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. 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 When you don't play golf. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Carlos from Spain and we are two people at the moment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Gracias. <laughs> Walter from The Hague, the Netherlands. Uh, I run a non for profit organization, schools of jazz all around the world. And uh, we are with two people in the office. Okay, thank you. Sure. This is another good friend, <laughs> <laughs> but present yourself like the same. Okay, my name is Chiara, I'm Italian. I am a graphic and web designer, founder of the small agency called Creative Artists. Yeah, Creative <laughs> Until Sunday, oh, sorry. And I am alone, I'm a freelancer, so. I look forward to grow, <laughs> actually. So uh, this is why I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Paul. I'm from the United States. I'm a one-person freelancer, also looking to find ways to grow. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Some people, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another friend, <laughs> Francesco. Cool. cool. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm Christopher. I'm from Norway. I'm, uh, I have a small company doing integrations, demo integrations, and blogging and photography. Yeah. Always open for ideas. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Um, uh, my name is Jensen. We are from Malaysia. Uh, we work in Stack Ideas. <coughs> uh, we do extensions that you could like use that to mental. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm, I'm Jason. I'm from Malaysia too, and I'm from Stack Ideas. And I'm not sure if you've heard of Comento or Commenting System extension. And I'm the lead developer for Comento. I see. Very good. Uh, hi, I'm Sam. I'm from Stack Ideas too. Uh, I am the lead, uh, lead developer of uh, Easy Talk. I see. I went to Malaysia some years ago, I would say 10 years ago. And uh, in the plane, uh, there were some documentaries speaking about Malaysia and uh, it was saying that Malaysia he have the most uh, mm, uh, diffon, uh, diffuso, come si dice? Spreaded. <laughs> Spreaded, uh, uh, in internet uh, for the people so more at the, t at the time more than 57 percent of the people had internet in the house so it was the first country in the world for uh, internet spread 
Malaysia, Malaysia, yeah. I was in Kuala Lumpur, I was reading the train, this uh, information in the documentary. Very interesting. Is there interest in the market in Malaysia? Not so much. I'm not speaking about Joomla community, but the market. So if you want to sell a website, there are companies that want it. I see. Yeah, so it's not, it's not very intensive. I see. Well, I would say broadband services is highly a lot of people have interest in Malaysia. Yeah. So, but your clients at the moment are international. So you're selling uh, yeah. components. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And thank you for everyone to have presented himself. I like to, to know a little bit of, uh, of everyone before to start speaking. So, the point is just this one. So as some people said, it's very interesting the idea to grow. And uh, change, perhaps, is not obligatory, but it's not necessary. But sometimes it's interesting to grow and to pass from a single person or two person to five, eight, ten person or more. Oh, ten, twenty-six. <laughs> OK, just a little bit more of what we do. We do websites, applications, and strategies. That's very important at the moment, OK? Because uh, in my opinion, in our opinion, oh, wait, wait, go, there. go for that. Companies uh, want strategies also, not just a technician that do a website. This is not what they seek. They are seeking for strategies uh, and people that give solutions. So that's another important thing. Uh, I'm not a, te a technician, OK? I'm, I'm more into marketing and stuff. And uh, I, do can, I, I can do a, a website with Joomla. Uh, in the sense that uh, uh, I'm what you call integrator, is right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but my role and, uh, and my passion is uh, sales and marketing, okay? But <laughs> my associate here uh, in uh, 2011 said to me, let's go to J and beyond. <laughs> and for me, J and Beyond mean, doesn't mean anything. So I went just to have kind of uh, fun, OK? I went uh, to that castle because it was in a castle. If the one of you that's been there, uh, I've seen that was in a fantastic castle, medieval, kind of medieval castle. And uh, after the beginning that you, you find people, you start speaking with people with other languages, with, with other countries in other languages, and you, you find a kind of fun. I realized that uh, that people <laughs> uh, were speaking about something that I, I don't know at all. So coding, 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 coding. And I start thinking, because the first job, uh, the, first, the 2011 job was not Mm, sale and marketing and stuff designing was all involved with the, with the code the programming and uh, I start thinking what I'm doing here I'm losing my time I'm losing my time because I cannot bring home something interesting for my company at the time we were two I was happy I was happy because of the fun but I thought that was not interesting at all for my company I was absolutely wrong, absolutely wrong. Because after a couple of days of uh, difficulties in trying to understand what people were saying, <laughs> uh, I discovered myself writing down some notes in a piece of paper, just with a pen, writing, writing, writing. And when I returned home, we changed our way of seeing the agency in a drastic radical way. So it was very, very important because this is not just 
a, an a, opportunity to discover the, uh, the code or other things uh, uh, involved with programming, but it's a, the, the opportunity to understand how other people have uh, success, uh, have, um, have had success. Hmm? Succeeded. Succeeded. <laughs> and uh, and uh, companies like uh, Olegwan with, <laughs> uh, with uh, uh, 26 people or uh, company like uh, uh, Uteam or like uh, the best London <laughs> agency <laughs> and all the other can can teach us something, and I, I learned a lot, and also I learned very much from you. Your, your talk has been really uh, mm, make me discover ma many things that I didn't think before. So from that time, we start going at every uh, appointment of Joomla, the international ones because are very interesting. The national one, in my opinion, in our opinion, are less interesting than the international one. And in JWC, Joomla World Conference, uh, we had a keynote of a very interesting person. Who knows who he is? Who remembers? For sure, you have. I don't know the name, but it's uh, come from uh, uh, Mozilla. OK. He's the founder, co-founder of Mozilla, Pascal Finet. If you want to write him, P at Mozilla, <laughs> OK? <laughs> he gave us. And uh, if you write down, if you write to him, he, uh, he contests also. So uh, very interesting. And he, he said something very interesting for me and very inspiring, that is uh, you could never think that you, uh, you are uh, in a safe, sure uh, position. You could, never, you could never say, OK, I, I have my, uh, my little agency, or I have my, I myself, uh, and everything is going well for the future, because I have requests every month. You have always to think about to how to market, uh, how to uh, uh, research and develop something more, something new. And the... Uh, the case was, uh, we want to say? Yeah. The, the example he, he actually uh, brought was the Internet Explorer uh, uh, case in uh, when Microsoft had like 98% of the market share with the browsers uh, at the time of Internet Explorer 6. And he said, OK, Microsoft said, uh, we have 98% of, of the market share. We are safe. We are sound. We have the complete control of the internet marketing, and that's what they did wrong because they stopped developing uh, the Internet Explorer browser. They just had a, like a support support team, no more developers, so the browser like stuck date for a couple of years, and the Mozilla guys just met together, built a new browser, and totally destroyed Internet Explorer marketing like couple of years and Microsoft from then had to keep uh, uh, following and you know chasing uh, the, the technology and the innovation they actually uh, when th when they were actually in control a couple of years before so uh, as an example it's very cool because uh, it teaches us even if you are the, the best and the only one and you are uh, in complete control of the market if someone else comes and you are not ready to innovate and research and do something more, then you are very in a very risky position. Like even Google, for example, now, even if it's the top search engine, the best one, keeps innovating, keeps inserting new things, new researches. Otherwise, someone else will come in and snatch the position. So back Thank to you. Thank you. So two things, marketing and innovation. This is very important. Never, never forget this thing. And I was, when, when, he, when he spoke, I was really interested. And I, I thought, I have absolutely to do these things. Because I never want to sit down and say, OK, it's, it's cool. People come to me. OK, now we are here. And uh, 
the thing that we are doing here is networking, comparing, and get a lot of motivation. I think that we return home if something is done very good, very well, we return home with motivation. And that's the good thing. Uh, the, the different thing between uh, Joomla and uh, Joomla conferences and other conferences that I did is that when, you, when I return home from a Joomla conference, I'm sure that I will do what I, I, I thought I, I want to do. Uh, so now we are speaking about uh, uh, the situation of the market, okay? And, uh, and the, the possibility to grow and to become a bigger agency. So I want you please to tell me for each country or for everyone who speak, uh, how is the, 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 mm, the situation in your countries? I'm not speaking about the internet situation, but the economic situation. Economic. People are happy or not? Tell me, tell me please. Okay? <laughs> okay. For Italy, people is really destroyed. People, huh? Not like Greece. Greece is also worse. Okay? Oh, mm -hmm. and we have uh, at least two people from Greece here. Yeah. It's you and Nicolas for sure, and um, and there is also. Cool. So now we we arrive to what I want to say. So. Bosnia. Fifty. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Too much. So very, very different. Yeah, yeah. And we are not speaking about crisis at the moment. We are speaking about something different. I, I want to know how you feel your country is living. So something, someone more? Um, Canada uh, is doing probably better uh, overall compared to the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of people who are in their later careers are being let go, and uh, so unemployment is uh, uh, the probably the worst that it's been in history. Mm -hmm. but okay. But still not too bad. And I think uh, that it could get worse before mm -hmm. it gets better. <laughs> interesting thing. Yeah, this is an interesting thing. Could get worse before it gets better. Spain. I think Spain is similar to Italy. It's very expensive situation. People don't have jobs. Not at all. Okay, thank you. And Norway? Norway? I think um, between three or four percent for unemployment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, then with the uh, oil stock thing, of which is the largest in the world, so we don't have any problems right now. Yeah. Oil and gas, you think, yeah. Yeah, so we are in a very, very lucky situation. And you don't have the euro also. Hmm? And you don't have the euro. No. 
Uh, yeah, this is <laughs> probably a good thing. <laughs> and so, someone else? Mm -hmm. um, it seems to be thriving. Mm -hmm. People maybe don't have any other alternative. They're made redundant, and so they start a business. Mm -hmm. Like um, in Italy. Yeah, and so that's good or bad. There's lots of really awful small businesses starting, mm -hmm. and some really good ones starting. Mm -hmm. um, but people are recognizing the need to support small businesses. Um, so I don't know. Do you think the same in London? I don't live in London. Mm -hmm. so But look, when I come here, I, I listen that the majority of people, quite all the people, mm, are not complaining themselves. So they are saying that their business is going well. And I'm sure of it. Our business is going very well. Why? Because we have invested in a, a very interesting sector. We are inside technologies, and companies uh, are not investing anymore in uh, paper, in uh, sometimes also in advertising in television, but in technology always uh, uh, need to be present. So everyone wants a website. Everyone needs a website to, to be alive, to stay alive. So for this reason, I'm saying in this particular moment, when everybody is, is complaining, everybody is, uh, has problems, we, our sector, our field, can grow and, uh, and be very satisfied. True. Yeah. And also, also, mm, just with little numbers, but we all together are a little, bit, a little bit more than little numbers. We are uh, uh, employing people, and this is a good thing. Sometimes uh, we employ people that doesn't have a job, okay? So I want to say probably our field is a very interesting field for us and for every everybody, okay? So could be that we could move away from one man shop and what we need to improve for sure we need to improve the structure and for sure we need a, a to improve the quality the quality is very very important okay because uh, uh, we did an example yesterday at uh, my pre presentation you remember you were there uh, the communication traditional communication agencies that very often don't have an informatics uh, informatics inside developers inside uh, could be that they don't have really a designer inside they sell websites and sometimes beat uh, agency like the one that we have because uh, they sell smoke very well it's okay you sell smoke do you understand? Or is it just an Italian word? No, no. Okay. So we have to learn how to present ourselves and to we have to learn how to uh, be competitive. And uh, very often uh, the one-man uh, one shop is not very competitive. So uh, to structure and to improve the quality and to improve the knowledge is very important. Is what we are doing here. We come here to uh, networking, but also to improve the quality of our work. So the point is, we should become, in my opinion, uh, a team. 
with different <coughs> with different competencies and uh, with uh, the the possibility to learn from each other of the team so a designer could could teach very much about uh, how to present something to a sales manager and uh, a a IT manager could uh, teach all the people how to think about uh, the procedures, 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 and uh, and so on. It's very important, and uh, the clients like very much to have uh, a to be followed step by step, and uh, they don't like to have uh, just a website. They like to have solutions and starting from the project, okay, very important. And uh, also giving a good design solution, technology and innovation, okay, and contents for, uh, contents for sure. Contents are very important, always more important. And what else? What else you could do, you could give, you could provide to your clients? Any idea? An ongoing service after the website is finished. Okay, that's good. Support. Support. Exactly. To do maintenance, upgrades, backups, CO and SAM, social media. Social media is very important today. There are there are companies that are not interested about the website because they already have. They are satisfied with the one that they have. And why we could not be also experts about social media? With the social media expert inside our agency, it's very important. You could not miss the opportunity in this moment to have someone that works in that field because everything is passing through social media we could not make like this like internet explorer and say oh i'm just a coder i'm just interested about that it's very important to inside go inside social media web strategies this one is a great field also, very interesting field that make the difference. Applications, mobile applications. Uh, who inside here make mobile application, please? Anybody? No one. I will start thinking about that field also. That is a big field in this moment. Technical solution, sometimes Companies want something that they don't know, but per perhaps you could you could find a solution for their need. Their need. Track, track uh, uh, commercials when they move inside uh, around uh, and have a GPS controlling them. Example of two two weeks ago. Okay, that happened to me. Web services, but also the traditional thing like corporate image logos and uh, stuff. And there is another important thing that is taking uh, uh, a lot of importance now and is uh, uh, viral marketing. Viral marketing is uh, uh, the possibility for an enterprise, for a company to promote himself, to prom promote himself without spending money to, uh, to the uh, traditional media communication. So they start uh, with a, a interesting and, and funny thing to promote itself and the and the social 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 media will uh, 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 spread the communication around other thing other very important thing is to add a daily works so what we do all days, uh, what we are used to do, and what we think to do, uh, we think that is very important to do, and for sure is very important to do, because uh, is uh, the thing that uh, give us the money to pay 
expenses, so websites and stuff, we have to start thinking about uh, medium and long-term projects. Who of you have thought in this last year to develop a, a project that is not a website, but is something different? Not for a client, but, but for yourself. Like, for example, you team always think about new projects, true? Mm -hmm. Some years ago, after doing just templates, came out with Zoo. Okay, this is a, a, a long time, medium term project. You, you took some years to do it, to do it? Yes. And now you are satisfied to, do it, to have done it? Uh, I'm speaking about this. Sometimes you have a lot of uh, uh, of knowledge, and you apply it just for the mm, um, to work it the, the daily work, not long time projects. So start thinking about projects because you have a lot of resources inside yourself and your perhaps your agency to develop something new and different. We have done it with Million, uh, with. Uh, Zoolander, that is uh, something that gave us, give us a lot of uh, satisfaction. Well, this is another very important thing. When you, uh, I was speaking about structure, uh, we have to think about uh, that without uh, contracts, we are in a big risk, big, big risk. We are like in this situation. If you go to a client and uh, you're not making a contract to uh, regulate the, the relation, you are in a situation like this one. For sure you need to invest in a contract. Mike here yesterday was saying the same thing and uh, I completely agree, without a contract, uh, you are in a great risk and you need, you need absolutely to invest in a contract. Uh, who of you have a contract? Okay. And uh, the one that don't have? Is it simple? Okay. An agency or someone that works with, with a, a final client that don't have a contract, please. Everybody else? Everybody else? Extensions, okay, okay. And the contract is made by a lawyer or you just did it or copied it? Uh huh. So, so I, I'm saying now, advantages of uh, having a contract is warranty for us, but also warranty for the clients. It raises the image of the agency with your client. It's giving something more. Secure payments and define responsibilities. But there are also disadvantages of having co contracts. Uh, there's slightly less flexibility in what we are doing and can hinder the, the sellings. But for sure, I will never sell something without a contract. It's fun fundamental. Also with a contract, you could not say that you are sleeping well. For sure, always could happen something. Always. And what a contract have to contain 
Sabel, for sure. Length, client obligations, agency obligation, responsibilities, term of payment, the right of closing a contract. Well, about client obligations, a very important one is to give information and material. Because many times, uh, uh, works stop because of the client. The client is not giving material information and stuff, and so the work we could not go on working. And it's like uh, when you build uh, a building, you know, you know perfectly. Uh, if you don't have the possibility to go on with your with your uh, realization of uh, your project, uh, uh, it's impossible to get the money also. So materials are very important. Approve wireframes and design. Pay for sure. And agency obligations, so our obligations. Present wireframes, present design, develop the website, and deploy the website. So, responsibilities. You are not responsible for, this is very important, this is true, truly very important. Site contents, if inside the the, the website, there is a, an injury, an offense to uh, anybody, you are not responsible for that. And in the contract, you have to specify that you are not responsible for what you put inside the, the website. Because many times you are putting, you're inserting it. And uh, if you, if you not don't have a, a a clause that uh, is saying that you are not responsible for that, they could ask to, to respond for that. Bet on your working website uh, if due to external causes. Hosting issues. When you, <laughs> if you provide hosting also to your clients, uh, probably you will lose more time in hosting stuff than in uh, uh, project, project design and realization stuff. So it's very dangerous. You have to specify that all the hosting issues doesn't matter with you, and you are not responsible, responsible for it. This is a very important clause that you, you have to insert in the contract. Your client cannot request damage fees for the work above point. I don't know in your countries, but in Italy, many times uh, with uh, uh, a good lawyer, you could ask incredible amounts of money for... See? Okay. international lawyer this is very important if you start doing job with uh, other countries you have to be sure that uh, you are protected also in that countries and uh, uh, I, I think that is one of the best investments I could that you could do and that was also an idea that we took after the job in 11 before we had a contract made by us, just uh, copied uh, from, other, from other people. We went to uh, a lawyer and uh, came out that was full of uh, dangerous clothes and many things very important were not said in the contract. So like this one, for example. And uh, I, I would surely if I do a, a job for another country, ask for a, a spe specified, specific uh, consul consultancy. 
Yeah. Is there um, multiple lakes of international climate? Mm -hmm. Terms of payment, higher possible advance payment. Okay, how much are you, you ask in advance? The first payment, how much? 50%. 50, 40? 30? 50? 50. Okay, 50, very cool. Scheduled, pay scheduled payments, step-by-step -step payments. This is another very important thing that you don't have to uh, have all the risk. You have to uh, distribute the risk into steps. Lower possible final payment, okay? So if you schedule payments uh, in uh, 50% as you said or 40% and then uh, before to have done all the website just rest the 10% for example it's very good because the risk has gone away you just have to uh, you have a 10% of risk at the end other very important thing that have to be written in the contract once you receive a payment you can keep it no matter what if it's written, it's written. It's signed, it's okay. If you don't write this, they could ask you back, okay? Right of closing the contract. Both yours and the client's. If the client closes, <coughs> you can ask for the next step of payment as a fine, okay? Because if he's closing, because he doesn't want to go home, because uh, the project fail, because uh, it doesn't doesn't matter, okay? He have to pay also a fine for stopping the for firing you, okay? If you don't have any any uh, culpa, if you are not your fault. He could not, he could not, uh, uh, he had to pay also a fine to go out from the contract. If you, if you write, uh, again, if you write it, uh, you could ask it. If you don't write it, you could not ask it. You can file the client. Other very important thing. Um, I want to say a thing. I, I got a degree in law, and uh, but I'm doing a different job as you s as you see. I'm managing an enterprise. So uh, when first I wrote down the contract, I thought that I was perfect for doing that because of my degree. But at the end, I understood when I took it to another lawyer, uh, to a lawyer, that. Uh, if you're not practicing it all the time of your life as a as a career for example uh, it's very difficult that you are uh, able to prevent all the possible uh, situation so like a coder that don't mm, have don't code for one two three years is not a, a good coder at the end uh, don't go to a friend that uh, had studied law to write down your contract. Go to a lawyer, spend money, spend a little bit, bit, a little bit of money. We spent something like 
mm, 1,500 uh, euros, but it's really well spent, really well spent. Don't go just to a friend that study law. It's not the same thing. Go to the maximum expert. Other thing, that's it, that's, this is a very important thing. Uh, this, is, uh, this happens usually with the clients uh, Oleg has usually, or, or bigger clients, they, they give you the contract, okay? This is our proposal for the contract, read it and sign it. And usually they always put, uh, the system has to be free of errors, has to be perfect, has to do all the things without any kind of issues. Uh, never sign something like that, because as you probably already know, there is not a software without bugs. And if you sign that, you are, uh, uh, you are uh, committing yourself to something unachievable. And so every time there is a bug, they can ask you a fee or um, damage fees or even, yeah, you have to fix it, but you, you are not responsible for damages that that bug does. So never grant something like that. If, you, if, if they give you a contract to sign and that, and that, clo that clause is in, don't sign a contract. Uh, uh, eliminate the, the clause and ask for a new contract or give your contract, that's the best solution. Yeah, you do fix bugs, yeah. You like some warranty. Usually in the length of the contract you specify, uh, uh, our collaboration is for one year and I grant you bug fixes because that's my job. I, I made something wrong, I fix it. But it, if, you, if you grant something like that, they can also ask you for damage fees, you know, a fine. Uh, you, you had a bug in your payment plugin uh, that prevented me from having like 10 orders of 1,000 euros, they can ask you those, uh, those money because you made the error if you sign that clause. And if you, if you are doing an e-commerce, for example, that's more dangerous because they could say, because of your bug, I, I lost clients yeah. and whatever. So. And this is there is a, a very stupid uh, European law that says that all softwares have to come out without bugs. This is the European law. The, the law has been made by lawyers, by politicians, not experts, because all the experts know that it's impossible to have a software without bugs, okay? And uh, we discussed a lot with our lawyer if uh, uh, we could think that uh, um, a website or application is not a software, but probably it is, okay? <laughs> probably it is. So uh, there is an European law saying that you have to prevent bugs all the time. Uh, so for also for this reason, you have to write down this. You, ne you never grant for bugs. Okay. I was so comfortable. I don't. I don't want to speak all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to speak a bit. <laughs> so. Okay. Let's see if this actually works. Still working. Okay. Um, so uh, after the first job we went to job eleven, um, we understood that to bring better quality to our work and to reach uh, higher, higher level of clients, so not just a small web company near our city, but maybe brands or uh, enterprises, we need to uh, get more people, uh, not just for, the, for getting more work, but to get people that were specialized in their field. So a very good designer, and not just a web, de web uh, developer that does design and coding, a bit of CSS, a bit of Photoshop, uh, or no one like it was before because neither I nor Dario are designers. We just took youth themed templates, customized a bit, and realized the website. 
So in our case, uh, in the last couple of years, we hired uh, Erica, which is our designer. She does all the design in Photoshop and also does some integration with CSS and HTML. Uh, we uh, use a copywriter. We didn't hire a copywriter, but when we need a professional copywriter, we hire an external um, professional that does all the text and so on. Uh, we didn't put there, but it's very important. We have a content insertionist. It's a, it's a person uh, which, for example, you have the client's catalog, which is in PDF, and you have to input like 1,000 products for your client, and they don't want to do it. We have a person which knows Joomla pretty well and is able to I take the photo, upload the photo, insert the title, insert the description, and so on. And for a low fee, it can just go on and put all uh, the data into the website for your client. And that's very important because otherwise you have to do it. And if you have to do it, it's time you cannot use for more uh, technical or advanced thing. <coughs> then we hired also David, which is our developer. I'm the, develop the, the senior developer, but uh, uh, we needed someone else to cover all the work we have. So we are David which is also only developer, so no design or no integration, uh, also some integration actually. Uh, and then we added last year Paolo, which is a sales manager, uh, to increase our number of contracts and uh, quality of contracts. So we have a person that actually just goes out, find new clients and manage their relationships with those clients. So any new request, any issue they have, they, we continue proposing new, uh, new solutions, which is very important. You have a client, why just do the website and then go home and leave the client? Keep going. Uh, you know, you, you, you have this company that sells jewels. Uh, why just do the website? Go to them and say, why don't you try doing a um, Facebook marketing campaign or a Google AdWords marketing campaign? Or try uh, make an I don't know for the uh, dad's dad's uh, you know or mom feast. Uh, do a special website, do a special page, do a newsletter, uh, do whatever you want. Propose giving new projects, and keep the feeling with the client. So if he's happy, if he's not happy, if he's searching for someone else, so you can. Uh, y you get more contracts and also you, you keep the ones you have and you have a more stable and long-term uh, solution and you can be happier and the client <laughs> remains happier. So what we lack currently, the biggest hole we have in our company, and it's a shame, <laughs> it's a project manager. Uh, actually, we are splitting this work between ourselves, uh, me and Dario, but it doesn't work really well. Uh, so sometimes happens that you have like 20 jobs so active at the same time and you, you lose track. You don't know what, where are you, this project is, if you had to call the client or it's stuck because you need a graphic, a photo, a logo, whatever. So the, pro the next step we will probably hire a dedicated project manager to actually deal with all this stuff. So to sped up all the developer. Uh, like Oleg did, I think, it was one of your first, y you hired a dedicated project manager. Yeah, one of the first thing you did. Not the, the first, <laughs> but. <laughs> because I tried to, to do it by myself. Yeah. So you actually hired yeah, we have two project, two project managers. Project. Yep. overrun and you lose thousands. But if you pay a project manager a thousand pounds, you, you gain all that money you lose yep. in projects running over. Yep. So it's a no-brainer when you get to a certain size. And I hate project management. And, and when I do it, I resent doing it. Um, I'd rather pay someone who loves doing it yep. and just go, here, do it all. Then, then, Because I could be doing coming to a jazz. It's a yeah. difficult job. Yeah. It's a difficult job.
We are here. Your, ah, your job. Uh, so you're lucky. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> quote, quote that. <laughs> so what, and we would like to keep expanding the sales network. So uh, keep uh, hiring new account, uh, account, uh, it's the Italian word for actually sales manager. Uh, so not only go sales and get home, but you know, uh, having a sales manager that finds, I don't know, 20, 30, 100 clients and keep those clients uh, with fealty and new projects and whatever, and calls them once a week, how the project is going, report, uh, give reports on, I don't know, marketing campaigns, sales, on e-commerce, e new projects and so on. So we don't like to just receive requests, but we want to go and to stimulate yeah. the market. Uh, always thinking about what customers are going to do now. You have to do something and go out from, from yourself. Yeah, even if we receive a lot of requests for new quotes, from website to applications to marketing campaigns or custom components. Even with the lenders, we receive daily requests like, can you please integrate my custom element for the whatever? Even if we have that, which should be enough to like, let us live and survive, it's better to have also some aggressive, aggressive some active strategy to find new clients by yourself. Because even if you have a down of requests or you are not so active anymore, you, you keep going and find new clients. That's one of the things that usually in the Joomla community I see that is not so common. Usually people tend to receive requests and do the work. And there are not so many sales manager in companies. I don't know who here has under his company a sales manager so that actually goes out and find new clients. The best I to say. You have one? Yes, me too. Great. You're. Okay. <laughs> but well, that's why. Yeah, you do it. You do actually active research for new clients. Mm -hmm. that's Ruth? That's it? Yes. You can go also? Yes, I'm with the sales manager and the sales marketing. Oh, okay. And the best agency in London? Oh, you're so good. <laughs> we, we don't actively go, go and search clients. I think it's something that we want to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. could be a good idea. Try to let, let mm, I would like to see if next year you try to do sales manager, uh, a new sales manager, and see if that like double the size of the company, because you have so much more work that requires you to expand your team. You know, it forces you in some way. You know, I always wanted to do a new developer or a new designer. Uh, when you do, when you have a sales manager, you are actually forced to hire new people because otherwise you don't keep up with the work. So it could be a good way to force yourself to go on and expand your team. I think that the, press <coughs> the most of you, you know, Gabe or Sab Sabi Banda, do you remember him? Yeah. Because of New World. Uh, when I spoke with him last year saying, uh, I want a, a sales manager. So before Paolo was yeah. actually hired. It's a service. Yeah. It's a service. So you need a uh, consultant, and you need to treat uh, uh, your sales, ma sales manager very well to be able to pre to to present your company in the right way. And do that process we spoke about before. You know, I go to a company and suggest new things, new projects. N I'm not just passively receiving requests. I want to a new website. Do me the website. Uh, build my website, but. Uh, you can also, why don't you do this? It's a new thing. You never heard about Pinterest, I don't know. Uh, a lot of companies who are in jewels, for example, or watches or dresses, doesn't know about Pinterest and could be a good way, for example, to spread the word about new designs or uh, new, uh, new jewels. 
and a new social media uh, path to, to, to follow. And for that, we would like to have a dedicated person that does social marketing. Uh, uh, do, do you use uh, any specific tools? Yeah, that, that's the next part of the presentation. So yeah, we would like to discuss that. Even. <laughs> and social marketing, uh, we, we think about a person like Luke of Sabifana, if you know, if you know him. The, the Gabe usually comes to the conference with this guy. Uh, is doing only inbound marketing as social media. So blog posting, uh, viral marketing, uh, it does blog, uh, blog posts, uh, Facebook newsletters, um, Twitter campaigns, divorce campaign, and he manages those kind of things for the clients. So he's the one in charge of planning the strategy, um, finding the right copywriter that can actually write the, the right text in the social media that can be engaging for the client and for yourself, because when you have a social marketing specialist, you can also promote yourself through the social media with this guy. So. We, um, <coughs> our social media is still a bit fogged up right now. Mm -hmm. We also host seminars in our yeah. office. So we have four or five people from any business groups in Tier 1, and they come in and, and learn. six hour training sessions. On social media? Uh, yeah, we, we did this uh, lately with a company uh, that wanted to be more active uh, in a side project in the social media. And instead of selling them the social media package, you know, come to us and we do social media for you, we are trying a new strategy, which is similar. They come in and learn about social media, so how they work, what, what, what are the rules, uh, how can you be a better social media, uh, you know, geek. Uh, how to post on Facebook? What to post? What not to post? What Facebook is? What Twitter is? And so on. So they can have a person inside the company that can actually do the social media basic things, and they come to us just for the consultancy on the long, str long plan strategy, long term strategy. and do the long-term strategy. So they, they learn, it's, very, it's a very good uh, um, selling strategy, you know. You, you, you learn something and you keep it inside your, your company instead of relying always on externals and some mythical knowledge that no one knows about. So this already, they already shared their experience in your, yeah, you would like to hire someone else also? Uh, you are thinking about new positions in your company, you are satisfied. Yeah, we just need more developers. developers and developers. Someone else? New people in your company, new positions. You, did you think about who would, would you like to hire next? What kind of position? Developer. Developer? Yeah. A developer, web developer or, or, or uh, developer. programmer, I know, developer core? Developer. Okay. No one else? PHP developer? Anyone else? Oleg? So many people? Sales. Sales. Yeah, because we don't. Uh, you, d you don't do sales. Just me, but just, just uh, 10% of my okay. time. Okay. Zero percent. Zero percent. <laughs> so you, you would like to actually have a sales network? Sales yeah. network. A social okay. media specialist, I should say. Yeah. When our clients needed that, and they would go to a different agency to get it done, it was almost always really, really bad there. Yeah. And they well would just want to fill the homepage with the same, you know, just keywords. Yeah, and keywords, they didn't, didn't work. Yeah, like antique dealer in London selling antiques, and antiques in London, London antique dealer. <laughs> antique. <laughs> and antique, 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 antique. Okay, antique. <laughs> And the other risk is that if you, if you let them go to other agency, I, there is always the risk that someone takes the client from, from you for also the normal things, you know. Uh, you, you go for the, for the marketing, you don't do marketing, they go to another web agency that does marketing and they manage to sell in the new website and they drop you. So you lose the client for the next kind of 
jobs. Yeah. So the more things you are able to do, the better. Because you, you, it's easier for you to get new clients and keep the ones you have. Uh, as Dario said before, uh, y what, what usually happens when you go to a, an enterprise, big company, uh, they call more than one web agency to test and see what they can do. Uh, if a big marketing company, which doesn't do actually web, but they do, I don't know, TV, sh TV marketing or, I don't know, uh, paperwork they can if, if they are big and they can uh, they have a good selling person they can stall the client for you even if they don't actually know the same things you do and they aren't actually as good as you are in the web so if you also do marketing they are more interesting in doing website and marketing for you with you instead of marketing with them and website with you or all with the other agencies Okay, so back to tools. Uh, I would like to this to be a roundtable thing. So what tools do you use? I can say what we use, but it's not like these are the tools you should use because it depends on what kind of work you are actually doing and what are uh, your, you know, your taste is. But for sure you need a project management tool. If you don't have a project management tool, it's like not having a project manager and not knowing what you are actually doing. So uh, how many of you don't have a project management tool that and are more than one person? So uh, two people company, three people company, 26 people company. All of you have a project management tool? Yes. So what do you use? Basecamp, no. Basecamp? Basecamp, someone else? Ah, Trello, okay. Jira. Sorry? Jira. Ah, Jira, okay. Jira. Uh, someone uses, you use, um, what's that, Redmine? Yeah, but that's more like for developers. For the code, yeah, what for the code. We use Trello and Jira. Ah, Jira, okay. Jira. Okay. We use Podium for sharing, mm -hmm. for uh, people's software. People's so okay. And uh, Zendesk. Zendesk for support. Yeah. For project management, we use Teambox. Someone has... Look at Teambox. Uh, it's a new one, and uh, if you don't use it, maybe give it a look. It's the, the, the it's something like Basecamp, uh, but it has an uh, easier interface for non-technical people. So the the issue is when you have a salesperson like Dario, and he goes out and sell a website. If the tool they use for uh, you know tracking the project is difficult to use or it's a developer-centered thing, or technical person center, they don't actually start inserting new tasks and say, the client told me this, the, the briefing with the client uh, came out like this, and I need to insert a logo here, uh, the menu on the right, and whatever. Then you lose track of your projects. So if the, in, instead, of if the tool is easy to use, even for non-technical persons, then it's more easy for them to just approach the tool and use it. But then it's not the tool that makes the difference, it's how you use it and if you use it actually. <laughs> so it doesn't make sense if you have basic AMP and you never actually track anything with it. The second, and this is the first real great improvement we did, is it was the file sharing thing. So before we just attached things to the project management system and it works for some kind of things, but for PSD files, image files, galleries, the huge documents, it was like painful because when you upload the 20, 40, 50 megabytes file to the project management system, it takes forever. Uh, sometimes they have file limits and whatever. So we, we tried different things and we ended up with Dropbox. Spring Loops. Spring Loops. And uh, the yeah. point is that uh, when you have something that has, has to happen, <laughs> you don't have to get crazy to use it. So there are many project management tools. Uh, we have choose Teambox because it's easy. It's easy and resource open instead of Basecamp. In my opinion, Spring Loops is a good mix of two softwares. 
it was developer centered. It was something like Redmine. So when a non-technical person went inside the, the, the tool, it was like, oh my god, what's this? Because he's the one is actually calling the client, and the client says, "Hey, I don't want that link up there, uh, or we changed our catalog. That category is not anymore." So, uh, he's the one that has to actually either tell the project manager, "Hey, the client told me this," or better even, they can uh, input the task directly in the project management system, and the project manager just deals with the who does this and when. So the list of tasks actually are firstly inserted by the sales manager or the, the person that deals with the client. And that speeds up a lot of the yeah. initial workflow of parsing all the items that the client wants and inputting them into the project management system. Which for you guys didn't want to use this, so I'm when Yeah, or using that one tool effectively enough, you just have many. The other thing that can happen is that you, you shoot for the biggest one, you know, the, the, the one that does this and this and this and this, when you actually just need the project management with the tasks and the timing, yeah. you know. Uh, you don't need Gantt, you don't need uh, super advanced reportis reports or file sharing or whatever, because you just need project management. So use a tool that is simple for that. If you instead use a lot of code and small design part, go for a developer center uh, project management system uh, instead of using a base camp solution that then you have to integrate with your code base to track everything you do. So just go with Trendmine or GitHub or whatever. Yep. With a client. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have the interface. We tried that, but uh, I think this is an Italian uh, behavior. Uh, they don't do that. <laughs> so even if you actually give them the possibility to interact, they do that for a couple of days, and then they start calling or shooting emails. And even if you use the integration with the emails for tracking those, it becomes a mess. So I, I guess it depends on what clients you have and in which country you are. Because I know that in the United States, for example, uh, I don't know any United States person that can confirm that, uh, they use a lot of those tools like interaction on a real project management solution instead of mailing or whatever. So yes, depends. Actually, the tools depends on what you do. But this is our experience. So file sharing. We did a great improvement here in our situation because before it was project management upload a file then you forgot to upload the file or it was not not, for, it was not easy to upload because there were like 1000 images for for the galleries and you didn't know where to put them then you have the, the, the I don't know the USB stick or the CD-ROM or the DVD or whatever it was a mess so we went with Dropbox uh, we used Dropbox for Teams I don't know if anyone has that. Is the uh, you know team building solution? You have one terabyte of Dropbox shared between all the users, and all the users can share folders between other users. So even with the client, you can say if you have Dropbox, just shoot the files inside your Dropbox folder. We'll have them, and then we can use them effectively. And the other big thing we did was structuring the folders inside in a way that <coughs> was easy to 
uh, both insert new, new files inside the Dropbox system and recover them when we actually need it for uh, doing the, the actual work. So we have a structure which is, I don't know if you can open the folder in your computer. It's in Italian, but I can tra translate. Uh, you need to move the, the finder on the other screen. The other. Yep. So when you have Dropbox, uh, there are some personal folders for each users, which are just for utility reasons. But then we have the shared one. If you go for the Webull, the clients one, sorry, we have <coughs> a folder. F yeah, we have a folder for each sale sale manager. So we have the the first one is the directional so uh, Webull's client, which are either mine or or Dario's. And then there are the, cl the uh, clients from Paolo. So we know actually who, who is in charge of dealing with the client. Then we have the active ones with which we are currently working with. And the non-active one, these are the ones we did jobs before and we s either they aren't our clients anymore or they don't have an active website we are building or a marketing campaign. And then we have all the materials, so contracts, materials, materials and projects. So m projects are quotes or offers or ideas we can share with the client. Contracts is the actual contract, so we uh, have both the, the signed document, then we scan it and have the uh, saved copy for security reasons. And then we have the materials, which are texts, images, photos and whatever, and a folder for each client. So when Erika, for example, does the design, she prepares and stores it in these folders, one for each client. When pa Paolo goes outside at, from a client and comes back with a USB stick or a, a CD, it just takes the photo and the text, stores them into Dropbox, so everyone in the team can actually use those to build the website. And this improved our uh, speed of work and file recovery solution pretty much. Use a tool, it's your, just your finder, you know. So it's easy for everyone to just use it. So uh, someone else has other solutions for file management? How do you deal with uh, images from a client or the text or whatever? FTP server. Google Drive. And it's similar to, to Dropbox, same, same solution. Uala, what's that? Uh, it's just an installable solution like folder sharing? Such folder sharing is the same as uh, a Dropbox, okay. But it's um, a little bit better uh, company in, in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So you have your data in. Ah, okay, security for security mm -hmm. purposes. And then the network backs are in uh, Locally in your. Uh, th yeah, a small uh, thing on that, we use remote working, so n they are not always in the office because they are like 50 kilometers from the office or something like that. So they usually work from home or their office and s once. once per week or whatever. So we cannot do the network, locally network shared the drive. It uh, depends on which type of Dropbox account you have. So if, if you don't use the Teams solution, you, uh, each one has to have the, the right amount of space because if you have two gigabytes, I have 500 gigabytes, you can only see two gigabytes of those 500 because otherwise it's leaching from the same person, you know, and they don't actually gain anything from the service. But if you use Teams, the space is shared between the users in the team. So we have one terabyte for everyone. So if I use 500 and you use 200, we have used 700 gigabytes. So would I have your 500 gigabytes on my hard drive? Uh, it depends if you share the folder, you know. Because uh, each one has its own independent account and you can, but the space of that account is included in the total number, but you have in your local drive the files only yours and the files shared between us. But the, 
uh, I can just not share them with you, you know. But yes, it's not very, very, very flexible on the sharing part, but if you structure the folders correctly, it works very well. And the, the, the biggest plus is the ease of use, you know. You don't need extra plugins, whatever, applications. And every, nearly every client has Dropbox already installed in their computer. So it's easy for file sharing, quick file sharing between clients. And do people have the same file as this? Yep. Well? yep, but if you, if you edit con in at the same time, it duplicates the file and name it like my copy and your copy. And it's your job then too. It's not Git, unfortunately. And you have versioning. You can add versioning of the files. So if you delete a file, you, you can have an historic version online that you can recover for uh, backup purposes, for example. You know, you actually delete a photo you needed. Uh, if you have versioning, you can go back and restore the photo. And also the old version of the same file. So if you, if you pay for that, you can have. So if you, anyone has other solutions? No? Okay, back to the presentation. Now it, it just around the presentation works. Now go, go for the run presentation, it's easy. Play. Okay, so we also have a CRM for clients, uh, for sales. When you have a sales network and you don't have a CRM, you're lost. <laughs> So uh, if you have, even if you are only you that sales, makes the sales, it's really helpful to have a CRM. Uh, we use a simple, the simplest one available, I think, because we are not 20, people. Uh, so we, we just two, three, four people managing the sales. So we don't need such a huge amount of uh, inventory system or uh, reports on how many sales you did in this country on that country. We use Capsule CRM. I don't know if anyone has heard of it. Very it's the, one of the easiest CRM with not so many features, so you cannot use that CRM for, I don't know, uh, selling tools. It's for services. So you don't have inventory control, you don't have, you know, track uh, carriers or whatever. You just have sales and sales support. Opportunities, leads, and those kind of things. We were using uh, it's very simple, it's very uh, full of uh, possibilities, but at the end, uh, again, like in the process and in many different tools, uh, you have to find the solution that is really used by the people that work on this. Because if you give a very advanced solution, it could be that you could be totally new daily, and uh, uh, the person is using a part of what you need actually so shoot for something that uh, actually helps you keeping track of things actually who doesn't have a CRM who doesn't have a CRM uh, you are alone okay but it can be helpful even yeah it, it's really helpful because it stores even your history or what are the next month what's going on for the next month so are anyone else without CRM that does sales Capsule. Uh, you can show it, I think. Capsule. Cap capsule. Is uh, capsule CRM. It's easy. It has an application for the iPhone, a web application, a mobile application. So you can use it wherever you are. Uh, even the project management system has the <coughs> iPad and mobile application. That's a very important tool for us because rem rem working remotely, having the mobile applications helps a lot. Uh, yeah. Again, this is very simple, so it's not huge CRM with all the features, but it's very good with opportunities and uh, sale pipelines, so re reports and knowing uh, the percentages of possible gains you will have in the future. Super 
two people. One one people. For your solution, it could be a good idea because if you are alone, it's free. If you have a team, then you have to pay for each user, but it's very cheap, so it's a good solution. I think you have a question. Uh, we actually don't do that now because the integration will be just like move the client. You know, I don't see, uh, we actually don't have that kind of flow where, where you have the sale then became clients and you want to track those kind of things because the number of clients we have is pretty small. We don't have 2,000 clients. So we don't actually need an rep advanced report on that. So we just move the, the contact. We can use Google contacts for a transition because both this and the project manager solution integrates with Google Apps. So if I wanted, I could save the contact in Google and then mirror it using Google contacts on the project management system. But since it's just the company name and address and the email, just easier to just retype that. Anyone uses a different CRM? So, yeah, we use that for invoicing. The invoicing solution we use, it's very good, very simple, and they have good products. The CRM with Zoho? We use that for a bit, but the interface was slacky, you know. So for sometimes was thus confusing. For example, sketches, it's very, very easier. Much, much easier, yeah. Someone else? Novo Tiger? Dynamic CRM. Sorry? Dynamic CRM. Dynamics CRM? Microsoft. Ah, okay, Microsoft Dynamics. Okay. Never use it. Sorry, no, you fight for it. <laughs> we use it. Yeah, yeah. It helps us to inbound marketing. Okay, yeah. That's if you have inbound marketing solutions, can be a good idea. And you, you two use that one, Ruth? No, no, we use um, Affinity Live. Sorry? Affinity Live. No, I didn't know of it. Mm. Because it connects with um, Quote Roller that we use for quotes. Ah, and okay. Invoices. Ah, yeah, this is another question I had for, for you. Someone use a quote solution for building quotes? No, not tracking quotes, so not a CRM, mm -hmm. but actually building the quote with a tool? Or do you just go with pages or word or whatever. Why? It lets us put uh, photo galleries, videos. Okay, so you can present a digital uh, yeah. preview. Because some people don't uh, respond to text on a page, they want to be written. Okay. So, so you go out to a client with the iPad, for example, and show the digital presentation or send it and look at Ah, okay, so it's remote, yeah. remote uh, working. Yeah, but I mean, some businesses we use Echo Sign to sign contracts, uh -huh. so that um, everybody has a copy. Of the contract, yeah. Uh, w usually in our sales process, we go to the client physically, mm -hmm. so we didn't use a quote solution for that reason. We just build a custom quote for each client. It's more, feels more uh, personal, you know. You, you, you reach, in, you are in contact with the client. But that's just a matter of well, who. We do a quote yeah, but that's yeah. I mean, it depends on the client you have and where you are. If you do more remote working or more local working, someone else. The simple one called Billing, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, nice because you can use it on iOS. Okay. Desktop. So from the iPad, you can build a quote. It, it, yeah. You okay. Can keep track of ah, okay. That's a good idea. This is what it looking like. Send that to PDF and they attach it as PDF pictures for the CRM that you're using. Yeah. The nice thing with PDF is that the only I've used it is that it comes with, there's a whole bunch of apps that you can just plug in, um, which have been built by the community. Yeah, that's. What we did is just start with one place and you, you just drag and drop and you can have different tiers, boxes, you can link between things that you create. We use that for everything, for tracking your order, 
very close to my my staff all of the patient clients all the projects that we were carrying in place mm -hmm. and then you deal with the corporate and outputs how much money you need to be making on a yearly basis down the CEO it's, it's just and it's all just so easy and customized yeah Teambox has that so it's very cool the, the the app thing if you have a project management solution or a CRM with the app concept that you can integrate with external tools with just configuration that's a very good thing for example teambox uh, as a integration with dropbox so you don't actually uh, upload the file to the project management system but you can browse through your dropbox existing dropbox and link the file so in the ticket you see the link to the file you click on it it opens dropbox but you don't actually upload you can actually upload the file and it goes to Dropbox, but if you already have the file in Dropbox, you can just link it. So y you still have the tracking of the file assigned to the ticket, but you don't have the file moving around, and it's, it's very fast. Um, so that's code sharing. Code sharing, that's, you know, depends on what you do. Uh, we do GitHub, but depends because we don't have that many projects active at the same moment, so GitHub it's not so expensive. But if if you have like 100 projects, GitHub is killing you from the economic point of view because you pay per project. Uh, someone else uses Bitbucket, yeah. Yep. We use GitHub because everything is on GitHub for external projects, so easier to just. I know your theme uses GitHub. Someone else, which is not GitHub or Bitbucket. Redmine. Redmine. So you are local, 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 locally managing your. We your get, uh, Jira okay. Jira. Ah, so you use Jira to actually see the the code online. Okay. And then there is the hard part, <laughs> communication. So uh, if you are all in the office, can be not so such a big problem. But if you are remote working or away from the office, communication between the team members, other than the simple project management system, like chat or calls, is essential. Uh, we, unfortunately, are still using Skype. And it's not ideal. Uh, so we are looking to other solutions. I was evaluating uh, HipChat because we use that with the U-Team, it's very cool. Uh, but I was interested in knowing if any of you has some other communication channels they use for chat groups or uh, calls between team members. Team yeah, but yeah, Team Viewer is great for remote assistance or screen sharing. We do that a lot. Google Hangout. Google Hangout. We use, for example, Join Me, which is a quick service like Team Weaver, just on the browser with a small app. So it's faster. Instead of downloading, giving the code, and whatever, it's faster. Join.me. Very fast. Why don't you like Skype anymore? Oh, I, I use Skype, but. Um, it crashes a lot. <laughs> um, it, it bugs you very much because everyone has Skype. So if you have it open for team communication, uh, you can be invisible or whatever, but you have other people keep that keeps you bugging for other reason, friends or you know the Joomla working group or uh, whatever. So per day I have like 1,000 messages. And that's working time that goes away. So, and the other bad thing is how the conversation is stored. So if I want to go back in time and search, it's local lost. So if I uninstall it or reinstall it or lose data, I don't have the conversation history. Or yeah, I join a group late on, later on, I don't have the history of the conversation before I joined in. While uh, HipChat is cloud hosted and they track the conversations so you can actually go back and I don't know years search through every conversation and see maybe a link you had or the files are stored 
uh, in a tab. So you have the history of the files you shared. So you don't have to go to your downloads folder and scroll and search for the file they passed you. You just have a tab with the files uh, and so on. So anyone, other suggestions? Online. Within a chat session, yep. and then it tells you what issues have been created and advice to be taken. It's a browser based thing. It runs within Jira. Jira, okay. Um, so, if it's so that's very specific to enabling mm -hmm. a Viper project, but it stores all of the chat in a PDF associated with the project. Ah, okay. And it tells you the, all the issues and the number from zero and so on. So, if the project documentation. And for normal communication, you go with Skype or. What else? Okay. Other tools you use other than these, and you you think they are es essential or they improve the workflow or whatever. Team team tools. I mean, no, not you know the, your IDE or FTP client. Ah, support system. But for the even for the clients, the, the you know the. the Okay. Because that way, if there's if they're discussing uh, issues, or something like that, um, they will know the the current um, on client system knowledge, uh, current support desk, and then everybody uh, knows about this. Assign that person to somebody, and then if that person can't do it, they'll they'll say. Yep. I what I. I fear the disconnection between that and the project management system. Happens or not? Jira, you can integrate them? Okay. So you can use the ticket as a task in the project management system. Okay. So it's all uh, running inside the same system. We we use that for Zulanders, for example. It's our Zenda solution. It's perfect because that's ticketing support and you know for for extension selling it's ideal. We actually never used anything for ticketing uh, because I don't know not any ma and so many clients that needs uh, interaction. But surely it could be a good solution to add. Okay. Okay. Are you taking the last one into account that when you have the Zenda system, you have the Zenda system? Yep. And the Zenda system. Other tools? Mm -hmm. Which can be prompted by seven people or ten people, and uh, they're able to share screens and things like that. So they don't have to be really, really technically proficient other than having a Google Plus account. Okay. So you could use that. Could be a good idea. Uh, tracking time tools. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's useful for, for maintenance, you know. You know, add this, it's a small feature, track time for that feature. Yeah. And we built an app for Zendesk so it's actually run in Zen. Ah, okay, yeah. A widget for... for and it goes down, okay. So even design, uh, develop a website. Do you know how many hours were allocated to that project? Yeah. So you create that, and then everyone. So you know if you go over time or. This is the idea that I took the very minimum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To integrate. No, not the only one, but it's a very good idea. I'll, I'll show you how, how we got it set up. 
Volume? Okay. Uh, Mockingbird. Mockingbird, yeah. yeah. I know it. You can share you can share in the team a mockup, which is mm -hmm. very web development oriented so you have elements like buttons, text boxes. Mm -hmm. I find out that in Italy wireframes are not loved very much. They prefer to have a nearly finished design solution as a proposal and that's a lot a big problem. But if you present a wireframe uh, it's not, they, they say, mm, what's this? Uh, yeah, it depends on the client, you know. I, in the US, I know that they, they go wireframe, then, you know, colors and typography, and then basic design, and then advanced design, and so on. Uh, no, in Italy, it doesn't work like that, so. No, uh, you do that based on guidelines. You know, you do a briefing, and you know the logo is black and whatever. So you you try to understand what the client needs, but it happens. So. Ah, yeah. This is. The can give you yeah the team give us <coughs> give us the uh, the design the alignment but we are not obliged to uh, to give other tools and it's written in this package but in the con yeah. because before we were in, in the past <coughs> we were crazy doing five seven ten proposals that I want the big red button at the starting point. Or oh, the splash screen, the best is the splash screen. Yep. We try to, we try to. Uh, lately we do, uh, we try to do design after. Uh, some company does, uh, you know, quote with proposal for design together. Uh, we found out that we don't sell very much with that kind of approach. So we sell before and with uh, no personal experience or whatever. And then we go to the, to the client with the proposal and say, okay, this is our proposal because uh, your headline is important, is the slideshow because, I don't know, your product is so cool, you have to explain it or green is better than red because the commerce website needs green and not, not red for psychological re psychological reasons whatever and you go on like that we are arbitrary <coughs> don't let the clients judge you or we are we are the experts you know that, that's what i think is that's what i think yeah yeah but some people d do not get that so you have to be like prepared and have the contract that says that's the, ba the, the, ma the maximum we do. If you don't like it, give us something else. Because there are people that... Yeah, just with regard to the design and the contract, do we, uh, we guarantee a completion time that we specify in the contract that that time doesn't start till the design has been approved? Yep. Yeah. It's, now, it's in our contract too, and there are timings for everything. So the client has to do uh, photos and text in, I don't know, one week, 10 days, if they don't do that, we can quit that, quit, uh, we can fire the client. So if, and ask, and ask for the fine. Not because we do that, but if a person just signs and then goes away or is not interested anymore in a project, uh, you don't have a project pending. And they can come back one year later and say, hey, I paid you the advance payment that couple of years ago, please go on with the project. You can say, no, we fire you. Yep. When it comes to quotation, quote, yep. quote, yeah, about quote estimation, you can find to prepare them. We're telling you there is all the time for each client, a certain amount of preparation, estimation. 
uh, a quote or design? No. no. Just quote? Uh, yeah. This is a big issue in Italy. Uh, the companies are not um, used to pay for quotes. And if you make them pay, it's a huge problem in the sales pipeline. So you lose the client. Uh, so it's just a matter of cultural. Uh, if, if you go to US, they pay you the, the quote usually. Not always, but it's, you can ask for a quote for a price, maybe, I don't know, 50 euros or 100 euros. But it's a fee that prevents them to just shooting in, you know, 500 agencies and ask for a quote and choose the, 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 the lowest price in the market. But uh, with three companies, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> well, I, six months ago, I, I went to a client uh, to know if uh, he was good enough for another, another agency. And he said, uh, I'm sure you, for many things, but one thing has been that you put the lo our logo and uh, our colors in the presentation. So sometimes to make something personal is very important, and they appreciate it. And so if you do it 10 minutes more or half an hour more, could be a good deal. Yeah. <coughs> you, you lose time doing quotes. Yeah. So you can. If it, it's part of the sale sales process. It's a risk you take to get a country, you know, this three hours quote for 10,000 euros. You know, you can do that. If, if it's 1,000, maybe you just do a quick copy paste and change the prices and that's it. Under 5,000 euros, uh, we paint it in uh, A4, mm -hmm. format. If it's higher than 5,000, we paint in A3, format. So you have like a huge very presentation, very, very cool. Very, very elegant. Special presentation. And all the time they appreciate it. Yeah. Very much. This is a very psychological thing. If you have a huge things, very, very detailed and cool, it's hard for you to throw it away and say, okay, it doesn't interest me, I throw it. Mm -hmm. If you have just a, a, a PDF or, or a small A4 printed without no, no bindings, no colors, that's just a paper, you know, you, you, you just throw it away. But that means that you always print the, the yep. presentation? But we also go with the digital, you know, iPad and scroll through. But I if you can, and if, if you have a sales, person that can go out, try going out with a huge, great all thing. All presentation are uh, delivered. delivered by, by Canada. If you're not working with you know, Canada, but uh, the, local ones, yes. the locals. The local ones. But uh, we also bind them. So it's not just papers. We have the spiral binding. Mm -hmm. So it's like a book, uh, just six, seven pages, but with heavy, heavy paper and nice looking graphics. So we could have brought them. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's personal and cool. They, they think about it before uh, actually refusing or, and y you always leave a strong impression, even if they don't uh, choose you, maybe they will recommend you to someone else or remember you for the next quote or something like that. We have learned this from a communication agency that uh, we consider the, the worst uh, competitor because they know, uh, uh, as, I said be, as I said before, they know how to sell the small, the, the, the clients uh, many, many times are perceiving as the, the quality of the, of the work. And so, yes, the presentation day by hand, delivered by hand, by hand is different than in So if you don't have any other questions, it's time to lunch. I'm pretty. Thank, thank you very much.
and just before the JM Young, we released our new website. So if you want to go and take a look, feel free to do so. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for you well sharing your experience. You. It was very. Uh, yeah, go and. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Should I switch off this one? <laughs>